Hey guys, welcome back to the show. It is Anna Gibbs and I'm your friend. So we're going to have an honest conversation today. Is that okay? All right. We're going to talk about the three lies standing between you and getting what you want. You know, over, gosh, over the course of my life, I guess I've really come to understand how our thinking creates our reality. And you know, if we want to achieve success in any area of our life, we have to examine our beliefs because those beliefs become the rules we live by. And specifically, I think we have to examine the beliefs we hold about who we are, right? The beliefs we have about who we think we are and what we think we're capable of, because before we can tackle any opportunity, any challenge or a new idea, it's so important for us to take a look at what our beliefs and thoughts are doing to either move us forward or possibly hold us back. So at best, our thoughts, when they are positive and empowering, can really give us the, the fuel we need to do hard things, right? To take those ideas and concepts and put some thought, some things into action so that we can move forward. Now, sometimes at our least, those thoughts are somewhat limiting, possibly even negative, and that can lead us down a road of self-doubt and even extreme insecurity. So when those feelings take over, when those feelings um, of, of self-doubt, insecurity, uh, limited thinking, when those things start to happen, we tell ourselves we can't do it. We tell ourselves that we're not enough. And so I believe we start to tell ourselves some lies and that's what stops us in our tracks. That's what gets in the way. That's what stands between us having what we say we want um, and, and really moving forward. So let's unpack this a little bit. I think fear tends to set in and fear can stop us and paralyze us right where we are. Now, what is fear? Well, I think fear stands for false evidence appearing real. Yeah, see, fear can feel those doubts and, and take over our thinking and convince ourselves that it's not possible. So today, what fears are you holding on to? What's really standing between you and the things you desire most? I think there are three lies that we can tell ourselves often that get in our way. And the first one is, I can't do it. Lie number one is, I can't do it probably the biggest lie we tell ourselves um, and really creates a lot of wasted time, right? Because when we believe that we can't do something, we tend to shut down. So listen, our moms used to tell us all the time when we were little kids, how do you know unless you try? Truer words were never spoken. Thanks, mom, right? How do you know unless you try? What are you capable of? What is your full potential? How do we even begin to answer that question? We don't know the answers to those questions until we put ourselves out there, until we try. And so today, I really wanna give you some food for thought. What are you capable of? See, every time you say the words, I can't, you're putting a limit to your own potential. You're putting a lid on that potential to achieve the things in life that you say you want most. When the truth is that you probably have an unlimited capacity and you have the ability to figure things out. So listen, I understand when it comes to goal setting, um, it, it's definitely important to be realistic. I've taught you this before, um, using the analogy SMART when it comes to goal setting. Uh, one of those um, key components of goal setting and the acronym SMART is being realistic. So we want the goal to be attainable, but again, I have to ask you, what is your full potential? How do you know when you've arrived? I don't think we ever arrive at our full potential. So telling ourselves that we can't do something is really just a myth that stops us from even trying some things, right? So rather than imposing limitations, what could we do to break through some of our limits? We just don't have any idea of what we're capable of until we set out to do it. So stop saying I can't 
and instead start asking, how can I, or what do I need to know? What do I need to do? Or maybe even who could help me, right? So instead of perceiving your limitations, can you acknowledge your greatness, stretch your potential and start connecting to your capabilities in a way that you've never done before? And it might just start with asking for help, right? It might just start with looking for some resources to help you move forward. Okay, the second lie that we tell ourselves, lie number two, I don't have the time. Yeah, this is a big one that we all hide behind. And the truth is, we will always find the time for the things that matter most to us. I think that there might be a little fear holding us back here too. Um, you know, when we tell ourselves we don't have time, there's probably something underneath that, like the feeling of perhaps the more successful we become, the more um, our freedom becomes infringed. Maybe we worry that uh, we won't have the time to do the things we love to do as we become more and more productive or busy. And I guess, you know, no freedom means you will have to give up things that matter to you. So success takes some sacrifice. There's no doubt about it. However, what I believe to be true is that success is all about the activities you choose to focus on, not the amount of time you give it. So, all right, case in point. There are people who spend 40 hours a week working on their business and could earn, let's say, $50,000 a year. And then there are others who spend 40 hours a week working on their business and earn $500,000 a year. The, the success indicator is not about the amount of time you spend on something. It's about how effective you are with the time that you, that you have. So it is always going to be about working smarter, not harder. So when we tell ourselves we don't have time, we really have to get into a little bit more uh, reality-based thinking on that and ask ourselves, where is it coming from? Is it that we need to reprioritize our time? Is it that we might need to make different choices on how we use our time? Is it that we have to learn how to work smarter rather than harder, right? It's, it's understanding what we want to accomplish with the time that we have. And I think action is always what's going to bring results. That's, that's a truth. So in looking at activities, we have to be honest with ourselves because not all our activities will bring the results we want, right? There's a, um, a, there's a great uh, saying, don't mistake movement for productivity. So in other words, we can be very busy doing things, but are we being productive? So all of the activities that you have in a day may not be equally as important. And it's important for us to then know what our priorities are. Because when we focus on our priorities or our 20%, that's what's gonna create the results that we want. So efficiency might not lead to effectiveness and more discipline does not have to mean less freedom. So in, in a lot of cases, the, the, when you apply this focus, and you really make your priorities your first order of business, you will see the results come in and it gives you more freedom to do other things with the rest of your day. And for example, in the Millionaire Real Estate Agent book written by Gary Keller, Gary says, discipline translates into effectiveness, which leads to accomplishment and that creates more freedom, not less. So if you have a fear of success because you think it's going to impede on your on your flexibility and your freedom, I'm here to help you see that it's actually the opposite. Because when you focus on the most important activities and become more purposeful in your actions, apply leverage where you need it, you will actually earn back your time. Okay, lie number three, failure is not an option. Listen, that may sound heroic, may even sound commendable to approach your life with failure is not an option, but my loves, it is just not true. And it's just not realistic. Failure is part of succeeding. And the fear of failure might be the single most common phobia that holds people back from living their best life. Look, I get it. This one's hard to overcome, but so worth it. The truth is, 
Failure is how you define it. Success is not easy, sequential, or perfectly achieved. All honest, <laughs> I preface honest, all honest high achievers will tell you that they failed their way forward a lot. History has shown us that failure almost always precedes success. So why fear failure? Why set out to have a perfect journey? That's just so much pressure. Because listen, failure becomes an opportunity. And we open ourselves up to so many more possibilities when we accept failure as part of the success journey. We will try uh, things and change things and adapt things along the way. That's a given. And if you could reframe your thinking around the definition of success and failure, what could that mean to you and to the, the strategies that you want to implement? I think it creates unlimited thinking. And listen, failure is here to teach us things. I think that it's through our missteps and sidesteps and, and flops and failures that we figure things out. I think it's when things go sideways that we get to rise to the occasion and use skill set and develop ourselves in a way that because it's testing our, our mind, it's testing our character, it's testing our grit and resilience, it allows us to become better. So if, if failure is a vehicle for that, why would we want to avoid it? Now, listen, I'm not saying you want to set out um, to create failure, but let's be less afraid of it, right? Let's stop telling ourselves that failure is not an option because I think that it's important for us to know that with that failure, we become bolder and less fearful in our actions every time. To be successful, we cannot or really should not avoid failure. Failure is a great teacher and it's something to embrace rather than avoid. People are achieving great things and succeeding at a high level and so can you. If you're willing to take the time and think about these three lies that we tell ourselves, right? Lie number one, I can't do it. Lie number two, I don't have the time. And lie number three, failure is not an option. If we could examine our beliefs around these three things and search for the truth and walk away from the lie that we've been telling ourselves, I think we open ourselves up to have a bigger, greater experience in anything we set out to do. Because at the end of the day, you have nothing to fear. You have what it takes to accomplish your dreams. Just tell yourself and it will be true. I trust you got a lot out of this today. Someone needed to hear it. <laughs> and I really am so grateful to you for being here week after week. So thank you. And if you did find value in today's message, share it with someone. Send it on to someone who might need it. Ask them to um, pass it on forward as well, because that's really, I think, the beauty of when we learn something, we can then pass on to each other. So thanks for being here with me, and I look forward to seeing you guys next week. Take care.